Welcome back to Mason Talks. So today, I want to talk about why Tyler Lockett ending up with the Cleveland Browns really would make a lot of sense at this point. Now, the reason why we're talking about this, obviously, is because yesterday, the Seattle Seahawks pulled off a gargantuan trade sending their former franchise quarterback, Russell Wilson, to the Denver Broncos for a package of multiple early round draft picks and multiple players. And because the Seahawks traded Russell Wilson, I think it's pretty fair to say they're shifting into tanking mode, or at least they're shifting into uh, not competing mode. And we've seen this with the fact that Bobby Wagner also now, of course, is gone. The Seahawks released him yesterday. He was another, you know, big piece of their team. He was another sort of franchise staple. So it looks like the Seahawks are going to be falling apart and they're going to be a selling team. They're going to be selling off their assets. And Tyler Lockett really is one of the more interesting assets that they have available for a team like the Cleveland Browns. When you look at Tyler Lockett's career, he has been one of the most consistent receivers that Russell Wilson and the Seahawks have had. He is going to be turning 30 in September, and he's coming off his third straight 1,000-yard receiving season. He's one of the best deep threats in the NFL, And he really just is a stable, talented, and consistently reliable veteran. So, obviously, a lot of teams are going to be wanting to, you know, trade for him. They're going to be wanting to acquire Tyler Lockett, especially these, uh, you know, other contending teams like the Cleveland Browns. And I think that for a multitude of different reasons, Lockett would be a perfect fit with the Browns. When you look at what Cleveland is going to have to do this offseason, they're not just trying to improve their wide receiver position. They are basically completely overhauling their their wide receiver group. Right now, the two players who are back, the two receivers who are guaranteed to be back, are Donovan Peoples-Jones and Anthony Schwartz. Jarvis Landry is a maybe at this point, but I would say it's likely that Landry will be gone. So you have Peoples-Jones and Anthony Schwartz. Now, the Browns are going to address they're going to address receiver in the draft. That's that's a basic basically a guarantee. I don't know if it's 100% going to be in the first round, but nobody's going to be shocked if the Browns draft, you know, Garrett Wilson or Drake London or Chris Olave in the first round. That wouldn't be surprising at all. And then from rounds two to six or two to seven, you know, just the rest of the draft, the Browns are going to draft at least one more receiver. They're going to come out of the 2022 draft with at least two wide receivers. So you're going to have two rookies, Donovan Peoples-Jones and Anthony Schwartz. The bulk of your receiving core is going to be under 25 years old. And for a Browns team that wants to significantly improve their passing game and who wants to put Baker Mayfield into a significantly better position than he was in last year, it's going to be important for them to supplement that young talent and raw potential with some veterans. And when you look at what Tyler Lockett can provide, I think he, number one, would be a great leader For those young players, he is a, you know, with the Seahawks, he's been looked up to by guys like DK Metcalf, who called him sort of a silent assassin, talking about how much work he puts in behind the scenes to, to really be one of the best deep threats in the NFL. So I think he'd be a really good leader for the Browns' younger receivers. I think he would be a sort of stabilizing factor. I mean, he's a guy that Baker Mayfield can rely on to be consistent and he would be, you know, he's not as much of a boomer bust type player that somebody like, say, Donovan Peoples-Jones is. So he's going to provide, you know, leadership in the receiver room. He's going to provide consistency. And then obviously it'll take a little bit of pressure off of Baker Mayfield for him to know that he's not just 
playing with these, you know, rookies or, or second or third year guys. You'll actually have a veteran in Tyler Lockett, it, you know, in that position on the field. And to go along with that, he's not going to be expensive if the Browns want to bring him in. If the Browns traded for Tyler Lockett right now, he'd be a cap hit of only $3 million for 2022. So this isn't like it's some bigger expensive trade the Browns would have to, you know, hinder themselves for. Like the Browns, Obviously, they'd have to give up some pretty hefty assets for a receiver who's currently still, you know, in the prime of his athletic career at only 30 years old. But in terms of financially speaking, he's not going to hinder you from making any of those signings or moves or extensions that you were planning to make. So I really do think that Tyler Lockett would be a perfect fit for the Cleveland Browns just because of the veteran presence he brings, the fact that he would give Baker Mayfield a legitimate deep threat, and the fact that he would be the you know the most reliable receivers uh, receiver that the Browns have. So as the Seahawks crumble and fall apart, I think Andrew Barry should take advantage of it and go bring Tyler Lockett to the Cleveland Browns. But let me know in the comments, what do you think of Lockett? Would you like to see the Browns trade for him? Thanks for listening to the Mason Talk Sports Show. I will see you in my next episode. Goodbye.